Hello and welcome to news update on Value Chain TV. I am Chat Moses with the news. Another news update. Lagos, Kano and 10 other states have concluded plans to start generating power in conformity with the Electricity Act of 2023. Value Chain TV gathered that some of the states had established their electricity market laws and were waiting for the approval of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to have independent regulatory bodies, different from the NEC owned by the federal government. There are strong indications that many states are taking advantage of the new Electricity Act to establish their electricity generation firms. Some Nigerians shared their views to Value Chain TV regarding this development. The report. The state are already having uh, their own uh, companies that runs it. We know that there's just electricity. There's uh, all of the states, Kaduna and others, they are also having their own different companies like uh, Abuja Electricity, I think they are the one handling on Nasarawa. And as I, I don't really know the route, but I'm sure there are companies that are handling that. But if the state government want to handle that and they feel they are in the capacity to do that, I think it's a welcome idea. If states comes out to generate their own electricity, that will, in one way, bring about competitiveness in the this, in this sector. So it will also encourage the discos and other um, stakeholders in the, in, the, in the electricity to also put in more effort in making their own service more efficient. That will bring us um, efficiency in the system. That will make people to have to bring competition and stable power supply. So you start seeing the competition will bring the efficiency in it. So that is that is just it about it. I think it's going to be the best thing um, because then each state gets to probably develop theirs and then um, it will create a healthy competition because then other states will be able to say okay look at what your neighboring state is doing and see how much they can produce see what they are doing even though i still don't see the visibility uh, because some states are not so gifted with you know like hydro dams but then of course we have sun and you, you can see recent the sun has been killing people as in it's been shining too much so um, i think most of them should either utilize what they have so either wind vanes or solar I think governments owe that to their people. President Bola Tinubu has assured that Nigeria is on the path to sustainable economic recovery and prosperity. The president was speaking at the State House during Iftar with those who campaigned for him during electioneering last year. He promised that the inflation crisis would be over soon, looking at the drop in the galloping rate of the Naira. Inflation has moved from 22.41% in May 2023 to 31.70% as of the end of February. The Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengasan, has expressed concern over an outrageous national debt profile that is currently hitting over 107 trillion naira. This was disclosed by the Pengasan president, Festus Osifu, while addressing the National Executive Council meeting. Osifu, who said the menace of the country's borrowings and the consequent increase in debt profile, both at the federal and state levels, is like a time bomb with highly catastrophic implications, while urging the federal government to rethink its plan to subsidize cost of essential goods in the country. Adding that although the move to subsidize essential goods and help cushion the current high cost of living is well intentioned, its implementation may be counterproductive. President Bola Tinubu has called on GAVI, the Vaccine Alliance, to collaborate with potential Nigerian vaccine manufacturers to ensure equitable access to life saving vaccines for children and adults. Speaking at a meeting with a delegation of GAVI led by its chief executive officer, Dr. Sanya Nitsa, at the State House, President Tinubu said partnership on local vaccine production has become necessary due to the challenges faced by developing countries, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic and other infectious disease outbreak. The president, however, assured the CEO of GAVI of Nigeria's commitment to fulfilling its outstanding counterpart contributions for routine vaccines for the year 2023. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, and its allies have agreed to keep oil output policy on change until its next meeting in June. 
This was the outcome of a resolution reached at the end of its 53rd Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee meeting. In a statement by OPEC, it explained that the JMMC reviewed the crude oil production data from January to February 2024 and noted that the high conformity for participating OPEC and non-OPEC countries of the Declaration of Cooperation. And on this week's news commentary, President Bola Tinubu on Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024, signed into law the student loans for access to higher education, repeal and reenactment bill 2024. The act, which is of historic proportions, seeks to guarantee sustainable higher education and functional skill development for all Nigerian students and youth. In this report, Kabiru Lawal shares with us facts and details on the new amendment made on the loan scheme. The report. Since its introduction, the Repel Student Loan Act 2023 had some challenges bordering on governance and management, purpose of the loans, eligibility criteria for applicants, method of application, repayment provisions, and recovery of the loans. However, the amendment of the student loans under the new Act sufficiently resolved the challenges highlighted above and include some amendments. The amended scheme established the Nigerian Education Loan Fund Nail Fund as a corporate body that can sue and be sued in its name and has the power to acquire, hold, and dispose of movable and immovable property for the purpose of its functions. This ensures that the fund can legally enter contracts including loan agreements and may also initiate action to ensure repayment by beneficiaries. This will empower the fund to provide loans to qualified Nigerians for tuition fees, charges, and upkeep during their studies in approved academic institutions and vocational skills acquisition institution in Nigeria. It will also empower them to build, operate, and maintain a diversified pool of funds to provide loans to qualified applicants and ensure access to higher education, vocational training, and skills acquisition. The amended scheme also separates the governance function from management operations of NEL Fund by establishing a board of directors with a chairman and a secretary. The board's members are selected by the president from the relevant ministries, regulatory bodies and participating agencies including the Federal Ministry of Finance and Education, the FIRS, NIMSI, NUC, MBTE and NCCE as well as representatives of universities, polytechnics, colleges of education, students of tertiary institutions, and organized private sector. Another review of the scheme is on the eligibility criteria for applicants. The new bill removes the family income threshold and the guarantor requirement so Nigerian students can apply for these loans and accept responsibility for repayment according to the fund's guidelines. Also, student applicants can no longer be qualified based on their parents' loan history. On the issue of repayment of loans, beneficiaries are expected to initiate loan recovery efforts two years after completion of their National Youth Service Program with an extension grace supported by a sworn affidavit indicating that he or she is not employed in any capacity and is not receiving any income. However, a person who provides a false statement to the fund under this section is guilty of a felony and is liable to imprisonment for three years in the event of death or act of God causing inability to repay. The new bill makes provision of loan forgiveness. The act effectively removes the previous encumbrances found in the first iteration of the act and paves the path for the protection of Nigerians' future by ensuring that the citizens have the means to fund their education, acquire critical skills, and become productive contributors to national development. The question on the lips of many stakeholders is whether or not government will proceed to increase tuition fees by further recognition of the autonomy of the nation's public tertiary institutions. This will be given in one hand and taken back even more in another hand. And that's it on the news update. I am Chad Moses. Thanks for watching.